Father in heaven, we're thankful today for the breath of life and for this day to serve you in spirit and in truth, in the beauty of holiness. This is preparation day, preparing for your Sabbath and preparing for your soon return. May we be found ready and get others ready as well. Forgive us of our sins and we thank you for victory over every sin, over every temptation. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. All right, friends, welcome to this midday power surge. This is December 13th, Friday, 2019. And we continue with our theme of the second coming of Jesus Christ, for this is the blessed hope. And friends, we want to get right into it. And please get your writing instruments, get your Bibles, get your notepads. And the first scripture I want to bring your attention to is John chapter 14, verse 1 through verse 3. In that scripture, Jesus gives a promise. And what is that promise? Those of you in the forum, what is that promise? The promise is, I will come again to receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. In connection with the promise of his return, the second advent, Jesus tells us in verse 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. If we want to receive eternal life, we must first find the truth, accept the truth. And to find that truth, we must first find the way. I want eternal life. Do you want eternal life? That means we must find the way and the truth. So now, I'm studying, friends, where is that way to find truth and to find and to receive eternal life? The Bible tells us it is in the sanctuary message. Write down Psalm 77, verse 13. The Bible tells us, Thy way, O Lord, is in the sanctuary. Thy way is in that sanctuary. And write down Psalm 67. Verse 1 and verse 2, the Bible tells us the way of God must go to all nations. God be merciful unto us and bless us and cause his face to shine upon us that thy way may be known upon earth that say your saving health among all nations. So what must go to all nations? God's way. What must go to all nations? His saving health. And verse number 6 of Psalm 67, the Bible tells us, Then the earth will yield her increase. What came to my mind? What comes to your mind in the forum? It's Revelation chapter 14, verse 14 through verse 16. The earth is, ri the, the earth is ripe. The earth, I was going to say, the earth will be reaped. So my friends, we must get to the sanctuary as we are preparing for the second coming of Jesus. And friends, I'm studying and I'm putting myself as if I lived in the days of Moses when the literal earth the sanctuary was erected, a type of the great heavenly sanctuary. And I put myself there. What would the sinner see? What would the sinner understand? What would the convicted sinner see and understand as he approached the sanctuary? Ah, friends, are you ready for this? But before we get into that, I want to whet your appetite to want to find out what I just covered by looking at some current events that show us the second coming of Christ is even at the doors. It's time for us to understand the sanctuary, to find that way, that truth, so we can all receive what? Eternal life. All right, friends, write down 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 1. Through verse 4, the Bible speaks of signs that will lead, signs that will usher in, signs that show the second coming of Christ is imminent. And the Bible tells us the man of sin will be revealed. All right, friends. And write down great controversy. Page 606, it tells us the sins of Babylon will be laid open. All of our sins will be unmasked. 
Who is that man of sin? The papacy, the son of perdition, the anti-type of Judas Iscariot, the earthly spirit of, of Satan. Look at this, my friends. And the Bible tells us he will oppose himself, oppose God and receive worship. That's 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 3 and verse 4. Look at the screen. December 8th. 2019 crux news it says the pope says call me father blue words oh what i love is being a priest priest but i prefer above all titles to be called father my friends what are we told in matthew 23 and verse number nine thanks christian it says, call no man on earth father. Of course, you have your biological uh, uh, father. Call no man on earth father. Amen. And Christ goes on to say, for there's one who art in heaven. Matthew 23 and verse 9. No wonder, no surprise. Pope Francis altered the Lord's prayer. Why? He wants to be called father. To receive worship fulfilling second thessalonians chapter 2 verse 1 through verse 4 look at it here my friends there he is altering or attempting to alter the lord's prayer it's clear as day my friends clear the man of sin is being revealed we are nearing home i praise god we are nearing home then we come my friends december 6 2019 remember in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 1 through verse 4, the papacy is called the man of sin, the son of perdition. All right. In John chapter 17, which one of Christ's disciples in the forum was called the son of perdition by Christ? Judas Iscariot. Judas claimed to have great concern that he was not apathetic to the concerns of the poor but he was a thief using the money for ulterior motives the papacy is likewise look at this my friends headline december 6 2019 national catholic register headline says report vatican invested peter spence funds in elton john biopic now we know what lifestyle elton john lives and parades supports and promotes listen it says peter spence what is that huh. peter spence refers to financial support offered by the faithful to the pope which according to the vatican are destined to church needs, to humanitarian initiatives and social promotion products, projects. And he also goes on to say, the Pope has the discretion, the autonomy to use the money brought in from the faithful into Peter's Pence funds. Let me tell you something, friends. Peter Pence has not become Judas's Iscariot's bag. Judas Iscariot's bag. Look what it goes on to say. Vatican prosecutors are investigating how funds from Peter Spence have been allegedly invested in loss-making enterprises as well as a movie censored in some countries because of its explicit homosexual scenes. Pause right there. Who is investigating the Vatican? Vatican prosecutors. Not an outside source, an inside source. Now you know what that means, right? Let's move on. It says, it says, where are my blue words? More than one million, one million, one million. What comes to mind? What did I cover last evening doing prophetic insights? One million dollars? Supporting the movie called Rocket Man. Look at this. More than one million in the movie Rocket Man. A biopic of the singer Elton John. And of course, you have other movies. Elton John, 
LGBT homosexual lifestyle, one million from the Vatican? Oh, my friends, oh, my friends, stay tuned. I'll come to that. Look at this, my friends. It's, and remember, what did we cover on last evening? We showed how at Advent Health, a professedly Seventh-day Adventist institution uh, donated $1 million to One Pulse, which is a, an LGBT organization. Who is writing this script? Is God talking to us? Come back here. Breitbart, December 6, 2019. Vatican invests $1.1 million in steamy Elton John biopic. How much of this must I give you? It says, it is alleged the Vatican's biggest investment, $16 million, went to this company that produces parts for nuclear power stations. That's nuclear weapons. Don't forget that. Then it says also, monies were sent from the Vatican to these companies, and these companies, they promote the destruction of a Malaysian rainforest. And yet the Pope says, I'm for climate justice. If from Peter Spence, you invest in a weapons factory, Mr. Pope, then the pence is not a pence there. A, E, H, E, H. He said, my friends, what are we told? Do you see why a Seventh-day Adventist, we must get our act together? Look at this. April 6, 2018, General Conference votes to exclude weapons manufacturers from its investment portfolio. Why did they have to vote on that in the first place? What's the implication? Move on. Fulcrum, that was Spectrum. Fulcrum, GC Corporation votes not to invest in weapons manufacturers. I wonder why. This is Advent News Network. April 5th, 2018, the official news service of the Seventh-day Adventist World Church. You can read that, my friends. Do no longer should we invest in nuclear weapons? Who is writing this script? No longer invest in the manufacture and sale of weapons, combat vehicles. Mm -hmm. You could read that. Get back here, my friends. Then it says, Peter Spence, again, supporting, one million supporting Elton John. Here it is, my friends. Advent Health donates one million dollars to Gay Nightclub Memorial One Pulse. Who is writing this script? We must, and this is one of the reasons why many of our leaders cannot preach consistently effectively the three angels messages the principles laid out in great controversy against popery and apostate protestants why they are guilty of the same sins of popery and apostate protestants but friends let me tell you something we must pray for our leaders within this denomination but let me quickly add without batting an eye God will have a remnant like Elijah, like John the Baptist, like Jesus, like the apostles, like the Protestant reformers who will give the trumpet a distinct sound, who will stand though the heavens fall. Give present truth, my friends. Here it is again. One million dollars. Let me pass that. I covered that yesterday during prof uh, prophetic insights. Here we come back, friends. And now we are seeing this is, watch carefully, Sean Hannity, just a few days ago, it says on Fox News, Christian Post, Sean Hannity says, faith is stronger than ever after leaving Catholic Church. So people are leaving the Roman Catholic Church over what, friends? Institutionalized corruption. Come out of her, says Jesus. My people, come to wear into Seventh-day Adventism, into present truth. The three angels' messages of Revelation chapter 14. Many are leaving. Take a listen.
what happened? Absolutely. Uh, like Amanda, I was raised in a Catholic family. The Catholic Church was everything to our family. Uh, and I don't think I had a day uh, in my working career that wasn't a, in the Catholic Church uh, before I entered politics. Uh, my whole life was centered around studying theology and working uh, in the mission of the church. You know, I don't have an answer, Amanda. I really don't. And I, I'm going to agree with Rabbi Shmuley here that I think the nation is still is traumatized. I think Catholics are traumatized. Yeah, you know, I have long lost faith in the institution of the Catholic Church, and I mourn the loss. Did you hear that, my friends? People are leaving Roman Catholicism in Babylon. Where will they go? All right. Of my faith community. But I made a decision a few years ago that I could not, as a lay person, continue to prop up a failing and decaying institution with my voluntary labor and my money. Mm, mm, mm. And I would say to All the right, women friends. of Australia, the Catholic All right, women, friends. Let's take a look at this. Friends, We it is clear that we are nearing home. Let's come now to the work of preparation. And again, friends, it's time for us to find that way. Truth, eternal life. It is clear. It is time. Hold on. It is time. Let me just say this, my friends. When I put myself at the sanctuary as if I were living back there, the first thing I would see, the first thing you would see as we were convicted of sin and we were approaching the sanctuary, the first thing we would see is the fence, the border, the gate of the sanctuary. Get your writing instrument and put these points down. What would the sinner see first? The sinner would see the border of the sanctuary. What materials were used to make the border of the sanctuary? Write this down. Linen. Put it down. Linen. What colors? Blue, purple, and scarlet. Write down. Put this down. Exodus 26 and verse number 1. Linen, blue, purple, and scarlet. Also, the Bible tells us the gate of the sanctuary was made of linen, blue, purple and scarlet write down exodus 27 and verse 16 so friends being the person who i am if i were living back there i would ask why did you use linen to make the gate the border of the sanctuary i'm convicted of my sin and i'm now coming to christ the lin the linen would represent Christ offering me something. What does the linen typify in scripture? It represents the righteousness of Christ. I'm convicted of sin as I'm coming to Christ. I'm leaving Babylon, leaving the word. I'm coming home. Revelation chapter 19, put it down. Verse 7 and verse 8. It is the righteousness of Christ that he wants to give to the saints. Friends, I want that righteousness of Christ. Do you want it, my friends? All right, that's the linen. Why was it the color blue? Again, I would ask, why blue? Because blue represents the law. Put down, no, put down numbers. Chapter 15, verse 38 through verse 41. The blue was to be placed on the hem of the garment. The blue represent that you will remember to obey his law. The law represents sin. So the blue is showing me I'm a sinner. The blue is showing me Christ wants to give me power to overcome sin and to live in harmony with his law. I want this experience. Do you want it, my friends? The blue, the law. And while the blue represent and the linen, the spiritual garment, it also represents dress reform, the practical, literal clothes. That's Matthew 6. Amen, my friends. Does that make sense? Why purple? Purple in the Bible has three applications. Lord, why purple? Why is that the first thing I would see? Purple represent royalty. Write down Esther chapter 8 and verse 15. Secondly, purple also represent riches. Luke chapter 16 and verse 19. 
So as I'm coming to Christ, I'm leaving Babylon, I'm coming home. Christ is saying to me, you are poor. Poor how? I want to give you my riches. What riches? Riches of faith. Write down James chapter 2 and verse 5. Because it's by faith we receive the righteousness of Christ. It's by faith that we can receive grace to be saved. That's it, my friends. And as I receive the riches of Christ's faith, now I become a part of Christ's royal family. That's it, friends. And I can go home with him. Do you want this experience? Purple also represents worship. Write down Mark chapter 15, verse 17 through verse 20. Do you remember when they dressed Christ? A purple robe upon him. And they uh, spanked him in the head. And they also bow down and worship him. Of course, in mockery, purple represents worship. I'm coming home and Christ is saying to me, look at purple. I want to bring you back in harmony to true worship. In its totality, also the true day of worship. The sanctuary message, my friends. Worship. And also, purple also represent kingly power. Mark chapter 15, verse 17 through 20. When I, when I walk away from Christ, when I return to Christ, now when he returns as king of kings, I can now become one of his lowercase kings, royalty. I want this experience. Next color, scarlet. What would that represent? Scarlet shows he wants to make my character white. That's Isaiah chapter 1, verse 18 and verse 19. I want this experience. Also, Revelation chapter 7, verse 13 and verse 14. Who are these? These are they that came out of great tribulation and have washed their robes and made them white. In the blood of the Lamb. Scarlet. Hold on. Isaiah chapter 1. Verse 18. Though your sins be as scarlet. They shall be made what? White as snow. Character my friends. Verse 19 says. If you be willing and obedient. And today I choose to be willing. To receive the righteousness of Christ by faith. The sanctuary. Hold on friends. As I began to dig even further, I saw the scarlet represents protection when human probation is about to close. What, my friends? Scarlet. Protection when human probation is about to close. Write down Joshua chapter 2, verse 18. Verse 21, do you remember when the spies went over into Jericho? When probation was about to close on Jericho. The two spies told Rahab, put what in the window? A scarlet thread. That when we see it, you and your household would be preserved. A scarlet. Is probation about to close, my friends? This is the end time message. Also, Passover. What was placed on the, on the lintel and two door post? Scarlet, the blood of the lamb. That's the experience, my friends. Does it make sense? So now, as I come to Christ, he offers me all these goodness. The goodness of God leads me to repentance, leads you to repentance. Romans chapter 2 verse 4. It's God's love that leads us to come into the sanctuary now, the courtyard, and perform righteous deeds. Love precedes obedience. Does it make sense, friends? In closing, in closing, do you know, friends, all through what scripture? This experience we just covered, it exposes the false church. Why? Write down Revelation 17, verse 4. Revelation 18, verse 12 and verse 16. The papacy has colors also. But you only see purple and scarlet. She also has linen, but there's no blue. It's time to come home. And my wife sang the song. Softly and tenderly, Jesus is calling 
It's time to come home. Take a listen. Softly and tenderly Jesus is calling, calling for you and for me. At the heart's portals he's waiting and watching watching for you and for me think of the wonderful love he has promised promised for you and for me though we have sinned he has mercy and pardon pardon for you and for me come home come home ye who are we tenderly Jesus is calling calling oh sinner come home